I'd like to call to order this regular council meeting, the town of Saugeen Shores. Uh, and uh, again, the first order of business is declaration of pecuniary interest. I'm going to remind you of your responsibility to do so. There is no additions, deletions, or amendments to the agenda. So the next item is adoption of minutes, and it's been moved by Councillor Minaj, seconded by C Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, that Council adopt the minutes of the Council meeting of December the, December the 11th, 2017 as presented. Is there any errors or omissions to those minutes or motions? All in favor then? It's carried. Next is the committee whole minutes of December the 11th and it's been moved by Councillor Rich, seconded by Councillor Madison that Council note and file the minutes of the committee of the whole minute meeting of December the 11th, 2017 as presented. Any errors? Omissions? All in favor? It's carried. Oh, the next item on the agenda is a report of the Committee of the Whole. It's a general government report, and it's been moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, seconded by Councilor Minaj. The Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the general government report dated December the 11th, 2017, recommending that Council approve the 2018 meeting calendar as amended to reflect that the January 22nd meeting be rescheduled to January 29th, and that the October 22nd, November 26th, and December 24th, 2018 meetings be canceled. Any questions or comments? All in favor then? Opposed, if any, that's carried. <coughs> the next item is an environmental services and tra transportation report, and it's been moved by Councillor Madison and second by Councillor Mike, Mike Myatt, that Council of the Town of Soggy Shores adopts the environmental services and transportation report dated December the 11th, 2017, recommending that council approve the 2017-2018 winter operations plan. Questions, uh, Councillor Dave Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you just briefly, uh, obviously the, uh, we, we looked at this on December 11th and I had no idea of the kind of winter we were gonna get into and it's turned out to be one of them winters that uh, that we, uh, we all read about and heard about as kids, it seems, but, um, the, uh, I would just like to say I commend the, the staff who are out there working day and night and as hard as they are, even though some residents may or may not be completely pleased with the level of service or that their expectations of level of service uh, aren't being met, I would say that uh, by and large the, the roads are safe and the, they're doing it the best they can with a tremendous amount of snow and I urge them to keep it up and hopefully uh, the plan uh, is, is used to a T and that we get through this and, and not... Uh, not uh, hurt anybody or, or strand anybody. Thank you. Thanks for those comments, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I agree. They've been out, I think, steady for, I think, 12 or 14 days without a day off and 10 and 12 hour days. So I think they need to be commended for the work they do in our community. Any further comments? All in favor? That's carried. The next item is a staff report and it has to do with the award of a cost consultant services for the police headquarters. And it's been moved by Councillor Dave Mayette and seconded by Councillor Grace. The council authorizes that Altus Group Limited be awarded the contract for the construction cost consultant services, police services headquarters, RFP number 2017-6220-5770-3 in the amount of $20,000 plus applicable HSD and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign the necessary proposal documents. Questions or comments? All in favor? Oh, a question? I would like to comment then is, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when when we, we first envisioned, and we were talking about uh, the lead-in period to this, uh, the new police building, uh, we, we certainly envisioned that there would be a project manager for the hired to uh, to take the take the burden off of staff having to do that uh, that job of managing the project and all the uh, all the constructors that are going to be involved. Now we're seeing a a cost control person, and then we're also seeing a little bit later on a commissioning uh, authority. So, is, are, is this what I'm imagining is going on? And I'd just like to confirm it is that we're we're breaking that project management job into a couple of different jobs because I thought that. A project manager would be would do all these things up to and including commissioning of the building. Uh, I think there's three really, yeah. I think there's three distinctly different jobs that we're doing here, and I think you're having three different people do them. There may be occasion when you have one person that can do all three of them, but I think in this case, 
I think that's what you're seeing here, Dave. So you're having three different people that are expert in one part of this project management. Project management is. Um, are we still going to have one person who is on the construction? Specific yes, on the construction manager. to ensure, okay. and they'll they'll be the project manager to ensure that they're meeting the construction design well, criteria. All the contracts, That's correct. The timelines and yeah. deliverables and things, those types of things. Yes. But that that job finishes, and then a commissioning agent takes over, and then a, at the, the same time we have a cost person. Yeah, that'll be the next the next part is the somebody that will really start. He'll do the commissioning, starting up, and make sure that. All those systems run as they were desi designed by the by the architect. Right. I think that. Okay. I hope. Is this, I hope I, is it is enough to say that this is all under the umbrella of, of project management? Um, I suspect that they'll have input to it. I don't know that they'll be taking. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any further questions? I think if you you know. I, 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 Probably you get a hold of David when you get back and make sure that if you get any specific questions or worries about it, he'll he can. Uh, this is not unusual to see that. I know we've I've seen this at the county where you have two or three different people with different parts of the jobs where you have a fairly big job, you know. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Next item then is a uh, staff report awarding of commissioning authority services for the police headquarters, and it's been moved by Councillor Dave Mayette and seconded by Councillor Grace. The council authorizes that X covert CX commissioning be awarded the contract for commissioning authority services, police services headquarters RFP number 2017-6220-5770-5 in the amount of $25,000 plus applicable HST and to the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign the necessary proposal documents. Questions or comments to this? All in favor? Opposed if any? That's carried. The next item then is a report on the so that, or sorry, Port Elgin Main Beach House Construction and renovation, and it's been uh, moved by Councillor Minaj, second by Councillor Grace, that the Councillor authorizes Allen Hastings Limited to carry out construction and renovations of the Predelgan Beach House at a cost of $637,925 plus HST. Questions, comments? I'll start here, Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, <coughs> just was, uh, I want to comment that I'm, I'm a little surprised by the number. Um, I had thought when we had a report back in August um, when we recommended option five, the dollar figure that was sort of estimated for option five was about $550,000, and this is $100,000 more, so a bit surprised by that. But I did want to question, how do we um, work into the project that um, this is the budget? Um, how do we ensure that, that you know, there's not... Um, uh, other items fit into this that, that we're actually going to control the cost on this, that we're going to get the work done on time, um, the work that is specified gets completed as, as required, and um, beyond that, that there's minimal disruption to the surrounding area. I think the deadline mentioned is sometime in June, um, and certainly, um, you know, yeah, the snow's out there right now, but hopefully we'll have an early spring, and so then starting around mid-May, you know, that becomes a very viable part of the community again. And um, I'm just um, curious to know, because um, I believe we're going to be project managing this, or is this a Steenhoff? Steenhoff? How do we then um, put some controls in place that, that um, make a very detailed um, and reasonable attempt to get this done on time and within this budget, um, and, you know, not to have... Um, because it's the same company that bid on the initial contract with a rather large ticket price. Then when asked to reduce it, you know, they didn't come down very far, and now they've bid on this. I just don't want to see, you know, this, some of the other elements, you know, sort of creep in as extras on the job and the price tag goes up. So when we say um, this 600 and it's about $650,000, um, when we say that that's the ticket price, how do we ensure that that's what, what the number is? Um, and my other question is, um, since it's debt, um, I would have um, liked to have seen a little bit more information about just, you know, how we sort of put this together over a period of time, because I think it would be a 20-year re repayment period. I think that's what we talked about. But um, I don't know for this and just what that, what that means, because I think the implication in the report is that the entire amount 
is considered debt. So um, perhaps, I don't know, Jane, if you, if you want to comment, but I'm, I, I, you know, it's, it's important to get the work done on time. And um, I'm, I'm just uh, Go ahead, Jane. not convinced that, that we, we have enough controls in place. Yeah, it's certainly been a long process for sure getting to this point. In fact, I have reports in front of me back from January of last year when I first started coming to council with this project. Um, the $550,000 was an anticipated price by the architect um, that he felt we could be uh, potentially the price would come in at. I, we're all surprised at the price on this again. It's our second kick at the cat, and uh, staff has gone back multiple times with the previous tender process to try and reduce the price, which I reported to you previously. Um, it was council's wish that we option, that we provide a tendering process for option five, which we have done, and um, you've got the price in front of you this evening. And as an, as an, um, a process for being on time, that's why it's on council this evening as opposed to committee of the whole. This has been a long process and again, timelines are at the utmost because we certainly don't want to be in a construction process in the middle of summer. Uh, my re most recent question to the architect is can you guarantee that we will be open by July 1st? And he has gone back with the builder and asked that um, for reconfirmation of that even based on the extended de deadline or the timelines process so they're still confident that they can fit in with the with the requirements that we've given them. Councillor Bernard. Uh, thank you Mr. Mayor. N not that I haven't said this before but this is a longer journey than than just this year. It, it's it's been something that that uh, staff and committees and the public in particular have worked on for almost 10 years now. In, including many members of the public that came forward and, and prioritized and said that, that, that something has to change at the Port Elgin Main Beach and it has to start with the washroom facility. And, it, and it's been, you know, it's, it, it, it wasn't just a few people. It was survey of hundreds of people. It was round table discussions with hundreds of people. And I was there and many of the rest of you in the room were there and, and we, we saw those discussions and we heard them and, and they were adamant. Uh, my wife's been adamant for the longest time that it's not some place that she wants to take our grandchildren to anymore. It just doesn't, it just doesn't service the, the needs properly as it is. So it's, it's been long overdue. It's come, it's come here at 13% at more than, than we sent it back the last time for, which is still more, but it's it's closer than we have, we have, we've ever asked for to get to the number we thought was was the right number. And I know a lot of people don't have appetite for for washroom improvements that at over half a million dollars. But when you ask industry to to say how much it costs, there are five indications of what what they're prepared to do the work for and how much they want to be remunerated for for doing that. So we, we either going to, we're either going to say yes tonight, which I think is the right thing to do, or, or we're going to say no and we're going to walk away from this and leave the current facility and, until what? Until an election issue maybe. But uh, I, I, for one, wouldn't want to, to send it back anymore. Staff's done their job, and, and, I, and I think that this is, a, this is a good end result. I will ask one question, though, and I, and I, want, to be, I want to be clear about this. When we say we're going to renovate the existing, I believe there's an existing number of, of uh, facilities in, in the existing space. Were we, Jane, going to keep the same number of, of facilities in the space or were we going to, to change either up or down that number? The renovation permits us to increase the number of stalls in both the existing men's Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, then I, I, will, uh, I will finish by really say, stating that it's a tough pill. It's, it really is, and it's, it, nobody wants to, to invest in, in the community. Like, it's easy when it's a police station. It's easy when it's fire equipment. It's a washroom on the beach. But it's our tourism, it's, and it's our, number one, it's our number one priority after health and safety of the community and the, and the workers here. It has to be our number one priority. And so I would hope that we can get support for it tonight. Thank you. Councillor Rich. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and then, Jane, how much, how much did we pay the architect to um, us 
the to make the conceptual drawings and to tell us how much to date cost. I think we're probably in the vicinity of about forty five thousand dollars so so we paid somebody forty five thousand dollars and I, I don't understand how somebody can miss the mark by thirteen percent um, do you know what I mean I and no slight against anyone it's, when you ask somebody to do the job and they present an estimate and then it, it it's thirteen percent out an extra hundred thousand dollars that that's really very difficult for me to to understand how how that happens. Can, can you if, give if me I any insight? If I may add, um, this is not the first project that's come in uh, quite w with an escalated cost through a bidding process. The uh, uh, Dr. O Medical Health Center is another fine example, which was a different architect altogether. So it's conducive to we believe this in our demographics right now in our area of Sonia Shores. And if I may add, hence maybe the reasons why the police station is going through the process that it's doing to ensure that it does not occur for that reason. So, so you're saying that because we live here that we pay extra to, to get these kinds of things built? I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm saying that that's a trend that we're, we're experiencing in uh, projects that we're doing in community services. Mike, my Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a long chat with the uh, president of the uh, Port Algosagi Beach Association today, and uh, their number one complaint-driven priority for the last five years has been uh, let's do something with the Green Street washroom at um, the Port Algon Beach, and uh, they've remained steadfast in that regard. And, and I know around this table there's been a fair amount of support to do something. Um, you know, to renovate uh, that the washroom facility in, in at the Port Algon, uh, the beach. Our number one uh, tourism draw, in my view, um, in, in Port Algon, Port Algon Beach area, and and um, I, I think if, uh, if if this wasn't supported this evening, I guess my question would be, what what next then? Where, where, do we just leave the building, continue to further? Deteriorate? Do we do we send it back yet a third time to try and get another fifty thousand dollars out of the price? Uh, I, so, fifty to a hundred thousand. Um, so I I just uh, the, the price is going to continue to escalate. There's no there's no question about that. And uh, you know I, I when I when I read the report back in August, I reviewed it again today, and I saw five hundred fifty thousand dollars roughly. Or I think it was between five and five fifty. Now it's six fifty hundred thousand dollars higher. I, I don't like the price either. I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not uh, particularly happy about the way the number came in. I, I happen to think that, that that the prices that we're receiving from contractors are are inflated prices, and I think it's got something to do with uh, the climate we live in here and the uh, the economic uh, prosperity of this community. I, I, I think we do get hit a little bit. I, I believe that, but. Um, you know, and having said that, there was there were several bids. Um, I think I think one of the bids was 1.1 million. I read for, I mean, the the, the price way back in the spring was 1.2 million. We cut it in half to 550 thousand in the August report. We cut out the second washroom facility. We made a lot of cuts to that first uh, first report, that first plan. We asked staff to go back, asked to go back out to tender, asked the contractor to come back with another price. And the price they they come in with for foot cleaning stations, out, outdoor outdoor showers, uh, family pods uh, is something that the public's been asking for. And and uh, I don't like the number either, but I you know the, the, the washrooms the way they're the way they are now. You, the staff can clean the washrooms, and ten minutes later they look they look filthy. You know, four, four or five kids come into the washroom with sand in their feet. And it looks like they've never been cleaned. We do need outdoor foot, foot cleaning stations and showers. I, I, I believe that. So I don't like the number either, but I, this number is just going to continue to escalate, and I really do believe we need to do something. Uh, the Port Algon Saugan Beach Association talked about it forever. Uh, this council's talked about it for the last year and a half or two, and I think staff have done their very best. I, I don't, I don't, I don't fault staff. The, the, the. The the, uh, the contractors come in with a price, and it is what it is. So tough pill to swallow, but I think we uh, we need to do something down there. So well, I don't disagree. It is a tough pill to swallow. I mean, I think 
I don't disagree that there's some need down there for better washrooms, for sure, but I, you know, I question the number. And, uh, and you know, and they, it's not isolated. I think, you know, it's not isolated to everything that goes on in our community. We're wanting police stations and, and lots of other great big capital projects that we're going to debt finance. And with the, you limit your opportunities when you go into these situations of further capital projects. <coughs> so... I, I, I agree with you. I, th I think we've put staff through this enough. I know, I, Jane, you've worked hard to try and come up with a number than, and guess what's going to happen around this table, and I admire you for that. But, um, I, you know, I, I, I question sometimes how do we end up here when this isn't really where we wanted to be. Not at all, I don't think. But what's our options now? I look forward and say, you know, 18 and 19, look at it at 19, you're going to be taking on nearly $8 million in debt in the next two years. The lady up there said 43% of the people in this community pay a third of the 30% of their income into for their homes. That is, that is, there, there, there's no question that taxes are a part of that. No question. So I, you know, I have a, I have a hard time supporting it. I will, but... I don't know how we end up get to these situations where we don't want to be. And, I, and, and, and Jane, I, I don't want to put anything on you because I know we've run around this thing many times. Councilor Madison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you, um, and I agree with you, your staff has done, uh, this has been a, a tough task and, and I don't blame staff, but we asked for something to come in at 500,000. When you put out the tender, do we say this is the limit that we go at? Is there any way that we could say this is where we're at? We don't want anything over five hundred thousand. So if you're giving us seven hundred, one point one, don't bother. Well, I, you know, I guess <laughs> I don't think it's going to help us tonight, Don. But I, yeah, I agree. I think you know. It's a situation we get ourselves into sometimes where we want to do the right thing and then suddenly end up where not, there's not very many of us comfortable with this 650000 with the, you know, it's going to be 700000 with with the architect's fees on it. So I think very shortly then, I think we've all had enough discussion there. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of times um, I've asked, and, and I know a few other members of council have expressed the same concern, um, the idea of debt is is part of this, you know. It, it's because you're right, you know. It's a, you keep adding to the debt. Um, at some point, we're going to run out of debt room, and are we using it for the right purposes? So, um, when is the conversation going to happen here about how we realize some revenue from the asset? Because the people using the asset should be contributing to some of the upgrades there, and it shouldn't be um, completely on um, the basis of the taxpayer. And, you know, because, um, quite frankly, the, there's a whole lot of people here who, who don't use the beach, which is unfortunate. Um, and, you know, they're not part of the tourism cycle. They're not part of anything that's connected to that. But we're asking them to contribute. Whereas the people that are going to actually use the facility um, are basically not being asked, um, in some cases, to contribute at all. And when we all travel somewhere else to a tourism-related area, we pay for stuff. We pay for parking. We sometimes pay for access to facilities. So um, I would um, like to think that at some point over the next little while, we'll have a discussion about revenue from the asset to pay for some of these things. Because, you know, we've got another big project there about parking lot improvements and intersection improvements. And, you know, that are they going to be debt financed too? Well, at some point, you know, the users should be contributing towards the upgrades. Yeah, I think in your original question was about how we're going to – the. Uh, the options and how we incur that debt and payback, we will have those discussions at the end of this project because we'll finance it through our existing resources and then when we go out to purchase the, the, the debt, we can decide and staff can come back with some options about how to Councilor Mr. Mayor, then, how, how do we rationalize other levels of government sending us in, in writing notification? that, uh, by the way, you're not going to get any more grants from us because your taxation level is way too low. And we sit here and we, 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 we pontificate that our low taxes is an advantage to the community, 
And then we say that we're going to, we're, we need to debt finance a, a, a washroom facility, and, we, and we're arguing that it's, it's not the right thing to do. I don't, I don't understand that, that uh, double-edged sword there, and, and, I, and I think that, that uh, you're right. We need that healthy discussion on, on what, what does it mean to be told you're, you're at the lowest percentage, almost the lowest percentage possible in Ontario for taxation. And yet we're, we're, we're debating whether or not this is a, this is a valid project to, to, to debt finance. Okay, any further questions? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. So we have one notice of motion that's on the Unifor wind turbine, and it'll be on the agenda for the next meeting or discussion. The next item on the agenda then is boring by, uh, bylaws, and it's boring bylaw, and it's been moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, second by Councilor Minaj, that bylaw 1 2018. Being a bylaw to authorize the borrowing of money to meet current expenditures of the corporation of the town of Saugeen Shores is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Any? That's carried. The next item is an interim tax rate bylaw, and it's been moved by Councillor Grace, seconded by Councillor Dave Mayette, that bylaw 2 2018, being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy for the year of 2018 and to provide for the payment of taxes and to provide for penalty and interest, is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Next item is bylaw. Amend the procedural bylaw, and it's been moved by Councillor Mike Myatt, seconded by Councillor Madison, that bylaw 3 2018, being a bylaw to amend bylaw 63 2015, being the bylaw to govern the calling, placing, and proceedings of meetings of the Corporation of the Town of Saugeen Shores, is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. Questions or comments? Excuse me, all in favour? Most of any, that's carried. Uh, the next is appointment of council members. No, sorry, amend salaries and wages by law. And it's been moved by Councillor Rich, seconded by Councillor Madison, that bylaw 4 2018, being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 4 2017, being a bylaw to establish the salaries and wages of non union employees and certain officers of the town of Saugeen Shores. It's here be read a first, second, and third time, and finally pass and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. Any questions or comments? All in favor? That's carried. Next item is a, 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 a bylaw to appoint one of council members to the Committee of Adjustment. And it's been moved by Councillor Minaj, seconded by Councillor Grace. That bylaw 5 2018, being a bylaw provide for the appointment of council members of the Committee of Adjustment, is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. Questions, comments? All? Question? be no problem with that. Any further questions? Good. All in favor? Sorry. That's carried. Appointment of, oh sorry, the last one is a zoning bylaw for a lamb on Mayor Mishi Bay Road and it's been moved by Councillor Mike Myatt, second by Councillor Madison, that bylaw 6-2017. Being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 75-2006, being the comprehensive zoning bylaw for the town of Saugeen Shores by Richards and Jennifer Lamb for lands described as lot 33, plan 508, E.S. Lorraine, east side of Lorraine, town of Saugeen Shores, is hereby read a first, second, and third time, finally passed and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. Questions or comments to the bylaw? Or motion? All in favor? Carried. Next item is a confirmatory bylaw, and it's been moved by Councillor Madison and seconded by Councillor Mike Myatt that the bylaw 7 2018, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores, is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this eighth day of January 2018. All in favour? That's carried. 
Uh, it's been moved by Councillor Grace and seconded by Councillor Dave Mayette that this regular council meeting of January 8, 2018, hereby adjourn at 9.45. All in favor? We're adjourned.